Hello, my name is Ian Simpson, and this is lecture two in my mini lecture series about business strategy. If you watched lecture one, you'll remember that I outlined what strategy was and the need for strategy. So let me quickly review that. My, uh, my preferred definition of strategy is that of Michael Porter, which is strategy is the creation of a unique position involving a different set of activities. That is activities that are different from your rivals or similar to your rivals, but done in a different way. Well, today in lecture two, we're going to talk about uh, the next step, which is OE, operational effectiveness. So what is OE? Well, first of all, OE, operational effectiveness, is vital for your business, but it is not strategy. And I will explain more about that why. OE, I would describe as all those things that you do in your everyday business, all those slippery procedures and processes and activities that you do to make your business run smoothly. So if I can give you a few examples of that, it might be, I, I often use the, the language education business as, as, a, as my analogy for, for describing and talking about strategy and creating competitive advantage. But what, the things that I talk about, you can cross them over into your business and I, I think you'll be able to apply them accordingly. So examples of, of what OE might be, for example, within my business, we use an internal communication system that's very effective, but very simple. We use Line. You could use Viber. We use Line. It's live and everybody has it on their, on their mobile devices and everybody knows what's going on. That's an OE, OE procedure. Our timetable is live. It's up, uploaded to Google Drive. Everybody can access it. It operates live, so everyone knows what's going on all the time. A great piece of OE. Your homepage, is it, is it slippery? Is it easy to navigate? Is it easy for the students to book trial lessons? For you then to follow up and contact them? Is it engaging? Is there a call to action? Your teacher recruitment, how do you recruit and then train your teachers, then assess your teachers? That's part of OE. Your office filing system, something as, as simple as that, your office filing system. Your, do you have a school management system? We employ a school management system called MyTPE, My Team Performance Exchange, a great system that allows us to communicate internally and externally with our students and it's all private and a secure environment. That's part of our OE. We share a building with the Duke, who a cram school. And as a result, we share costs. We share the costs of shuttle buses, producing chirashis, flyers, going out and posting together. All these things bring down our costs and make our operation easier. These are just a few of the examples of, of what OE is or can be within your business. And it is vital to your strategy to have good OE because it makes your business run smoothly and it reduces costs. But OE is not strategy. I said that earlier, I'll say it again. Back in the 70s and 80s, we all know that the Japanese companies led the world. And one of the ways that they led the world is that they were so good at operational effectiveness. They created such systems as TQM, change management, partnership, outsourcing, to name but a few. But it wasn't long, 10, 20 years, before the rest of the world watched what they were doing, imitated them, and caught up to them. And now Japanese companies are notorious for having low profits. And still, they are competing on OE now, many of the Japanese companies. And that means, for example, if you go to a, a car dealership, many of the products, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, they're very similar. The way they're trying to get you to buy cars is through customer service. That's OE. And great customer service requires money and input from staff and salaries, which drives down profits because it costs money. Therefore, Japanese companies are notorious for having low profit margins because still they're trying to compete on OE instead of creating unique products and trying to create a really strong definitive strategy. So where it is important 
it's important to remember that it is only a part of strategy because it is not sustainable because people will copy you, people will imitate you. And what happens then is the same as in Japan is that you get what is what we call it, it becomes a competitive convergence where everyone meets at the same point where all where we all end up doing the same thing with the same amount of money and the same machinery and technology and we're all trying to continually improve our best practice but we get to a point where it's difficult to go any farther and then you need something else to take you ahead again and create a competitive advantage so OE is important because it helps you to perform tasks better and faster with fewer inputs required and minimizing defects and complaints so make it good in your school make it very good because it's very important for you but do remember the point of this lecture number two that OE is not strategy but however it is an important point an important part of strategy so please take that message away with you and I'll see you again in lecture three when we will continue uh, until that point give yourself the edge